Welcome to the Fix Your Sciatica podcast, where we meet with experts and clients and discuss how to manage your sciatica and low back pain without the use of medications or surgery. I'm your host, Dr. Ashley Mack, and I'm a physical therapist as well as the founder of iFixYourSciatica.com, a go-to resource for pain management. Hello, listeners. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Uh, on today's episode, I have a very special guest who I've known for uh, quite a few years from now, and it's exciting because she's gone through such an amazing journey, and what was interesting about uh, many interesting things about the COVID pandemic is that it actually brought us together again, and it got us on another journey, which was really cool, and she'll tell you all about it, but I would love to welcome uh, my good friend, a person I work with, Marla. Thank you so much for being on today's episode. Uh, thank you for inviting me. I'm so happy to be here with you. So really a large part of the purpose of interviewing uh, clients and people like you is that I want to be able to share your story to inspire others because there are many people who are going through very similar struggles that you went through and they are looking for those inspirations such as yourself in regards to the steps that they've taken or the steps that you've taken to get you to where you're at today. So Marla, if you wouldn't mind, can you tell us a little bit more uh, about yourself and how long that we've been working together? Yeah, so um, we met in 2017, wasn't it? 2017, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Um, so we've known each other for almost four years now. We met in New Jersey. Um, it was my wife, actually, that found your profile. I had some, I was having some issues, some health issues. I had really bad arthritis and my mobility was getting to be very challenging um, and painful. And I had some success with um, physical therapy, and my wife had wondered if finding a personal trainer physical therapy combo person might be um, a good fit for me. She's kind of intuitive that way. So she's the one that did all the research, and she found you at um, Hudson Fitzen Fitness in New Jersey. And... Um, I made an appointment and we started working together. And I think, um, I mean, just overall health issues that I was having at that time, I think back to that time um, and what a change that was for me, both uh, physically and mentally. Um, but I, I remember the point where I realized that this was gonna make a difference in my life. Um, so in New Jersey, you walk everywhere. I know that's different for us here. Now that we're in California, we are never without our car. But in New Jersey, we walk everywhere. And in my commute in the morning, I had to walk up a, a flight of stairs that went up and over the freeway. So a lot of stairs. And I remember coming, um, going, coming home one time and looking at the stairs with dread. And I started going up and I, it wasn't painful. And I remember thinking of you and getting out my phone, like, I just went up the stairs without pain. And I was like, yeah, that was the most amazing thing ever. And um, that was probably a time when I realized that, wow, it could be different. It could really, I don't have to be in pain. It could be different. Um, and, and that was a real pivotal moment for me. And also with you too, like, hey, I don't have to be good at this. And maybe that's part of my history, right? Like I've tried and failed and tried and failed, and tried and failed. Um, and so I thought that maybe it wasn't possible, but I realized, hey, I don't have to be good at this because you are good at this and I can trust you to kind of help figure it out. And then if I just do what you tell me to do, then it will get better, right? And um, I've put that to the test over and over again. That seems to be um, really working well for me. So that's a little backstory, right? For um, how we got, how we started working together. Yeah, you bring up a- And then actually, can I tell the reconnection story? Please tell the reconnection story because I love it. Because that is so awesome too. Okay, so the reconnection story is equally awesome because I moved to California 
I'm like, bye, Ashley, good luck to you. And I moved to California, so across the country and um, ran into some difficult health issues yet again with some surgeries and um, just long story endless. Um, I found myself in the same boat over again, right? And thinking, what am I gonna do? Feeling so discouraged yet again. Like, I wonder, you know, since the pandemic hit, maybe Ashley could, we could do some work together, even though we're across the country from one another. And so I tried to get a hold of you again, and lo and behold, you too had moved to the sunny state of California. Woohoo! No more walking through slushy snow for us. So um, I love our reconnection. And, and that, um, once again, reminded over and over again that I don't have to be good at it. I know that you are. And so um, no matter how many times you start and fail, um, that it really is possible to look for it to look differently. Your health can look differently. The way that you move can look differently. And, um, and to start wherever you're at, right? Like I, I think I hesitated to reach out to you for so long because all sorts of emotions. I was embarrassed. How did I get here again? How did this happen? But um, the only thing that you have to do to change everything is make one step in that direction. And that was it. So, and then here we are, here we are. And um, definitely things have improved so much overall and um, feel so much stronger. So that's a little bit of history. That was a long one. You didn't mean for it to be that long, probably, huh? I loved it. It was a great story because, I mean, on these episodes, like one of the biggest things is ensuring that it's a, it's a two-way conversation, but ultimately I can get so caught up in talking a lot. So being able to have someone like you share what you've gone through, because I mean, one of the biggest things I, I think of, and I see this a lot in um, just fitness commercials and stuff that you see on the internet, but it, it is so hard to get started and start again. Like there's this aspect of uh, like inertia, like the law of physics is inertia, like an object will keep on moving, but also unless there's act upon an outside force, but then it, same thing when it comes to, it's hard to get something moving if it's so set in one specific position and it does take a lot of energy and it does require a lot of uh going over emotion emotional obstacles to be able to say okay i can do this and you bring up a, a lot of really interesting points and this is something that i've actually discussed with my wife multiple times because i was a former college swimmer so was my wife so the majority of our lives we were very good at a specific sport slash skill set so when it came to uh evolving out of that we migrated towards uh other athletic skills that we happen to be good at. We didn't like having to learn an entire new thing because we didn't enjoy uh, not being good at something. And it's really tough, especially when you're an adult, right? You establish your identity and then to try something completely new, it's like a big blow to the ego. Am I right? Yeah, I get to, it shakes your identity actually. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's something pretty both terrifying and wickedly powerful about daring to see your life differently, right? Yeah. That takes a level of bravery. And, um, but it's also empowering and exciting, right? It, it brings back an aspect. And I mean, for me at my age too, I think that most people my age don't try to see their lives differently. But when you do, like you're bringing back that, childlike aspect of possibilities right yeah. um and that's that is the mindset right it's that hey it could be possible it could happen like it could be real like it could really happen and um and you wouldn't know unless you actually try so but that i like that initial inertia that you're talking about because that that's a hurdle, right? That's a mental hurdle. And it's not like, oh, it's all sunshine and roses now. That's not it at all. But now there is momentum. And I, I do know, like, 
but that how do you get over that initial momentum? I'm trying to think back of what it was. Like, I guess yeah. maybe you, yeah. What could I um, share with you what I saw on my end when you? Yeah, first yeah. Oh my gosh, I would be so interested in that. <laughs> so um, to 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 the listeners out there. Um, one of the things I often get from a statement standpoint, they're like, Ashley, you are so positive. Like, how are you so positive all the time? And really, uh, I'm not, in my eyes, I'm not like a super positive person, but I always look at challenges or situations and I think, okay, well, what can I do to make the situation better, whether it be a situation or help someone else? And um, with that being the case, I always look at, okay, I'm going to do whatever I can to help this person in front of me. So when Marla came in, um, I approached it just like any other intro meeting. I was just building it, uh, some, what we call rapport, just getting an opportunity to develop a little bit of a relationship. But one thing that I've noticed was that, yeah, it is kind of scary to go into a gym because we had a brick and mortar facility. It is really scary to go into a gym because there's so many other preconceived notions about say just the fitness industry itself but then when you go into a, a, a building where there's nothing but weights it can be kind of scary and I'll tell you what I experienced that same type of nervousness and anxiety when I walk into uh, a, another fitness facility I experience it every single time so going into this conversation I already knew that there was going to be this air of uh, we'll say like anxiousness fear just not really quite sure it's like the fear of the unknown and when I, when I, when we first met, I could feel that. And I could tell that you weren't really quite sure, um, what, what was needed, but you, uh, or what to do, but you knew exactly where you wanted to be. So that was really, really helpful being able to identify, okay, let's, here's the destination that Marla wanted to get. She wanted to get stronger. She wanted to be able to climb those stairs and, and not have pain and not dread it. And, I said, okay, perfect. This is going to be our destination. Let's ride this, let's ride this train together. Um, so then that way you really don't have to do all this stuff on your own. And this brings me to another part of what you what you brought up, Marla, was um as you said, you you don't have to be good, but it's my job to be good and knowledgeable in that. And that really it it, it says a lot because one, it takes a lot to say that you can't do this yourself. Um, that takes a lot of energy, but then also too, um, in a way you're actually prioritizing your time because you, we don't have time to try to figure all this stuff on our own, to try to muscle through because we have many other responsibilities in our life and to be able to find someone who can cut things down and make it much more actionable and easier to implement is a lot better not to say that i mean you can absolutely do this on your own it's going to be a struggle I, I have to like even for myself i need to hire professionals to help me um and also i think another big part um for the folks who are listening marla is a person who helps other people so that's another big thing too when you're helping other people um with your relationships and your professions um it's really hard for us to, to ask for help um and it also is really hard for us to recognize that we do need we, we do need assistance helping us overcome all that. So being able to reach out and say, I'm not the expert in this is like a very important piece of that. And, um, and I think being able to establish that, that uh, I don't know, that, that, that position to be able to say, I'm the expert in helping you move well without pain. I feel like once I said that, you felt a lot more comfortable. Uh, the, the moment I said that, I said, okay, you're, we're going to do this. You're not going to hurt as much. And I saw the, the look in your face, you're, you're excited um, with yeah. that. Yeah, I do think, um, yeah, you're right. And as a helper, a person in the helping profession, so I'm a school counselor, right? So, I mean, all day, every day, I'm, I'm doing things to help students learn to cope and, and to know and to ask for help, right? So either you believe that or you don't. And and you can't genuinely help someone else if you don't help receive, right? You can't genuinely be a person to be a contributor um, in, to others unless you have, you're in that circle. Like that's a circle, it's not one-sided. Like you can't just like, oh, I'm just this, 
if you're a giving person, if you're not ever in the receiving um, position, then it's about you. It's not about the giving, right? So it's got to be that that cyclical um, that cyclical thing, which I think. And finding the right person to help, I think, was a big deal. So the fact that that whatever you said when we first met, right? I just remember leaving feeling like this could really work. Like this could really work. I I felt hopeful. I guess that was like this hope uh, of vaccination. Like here you go. Here's some hope for you. I'm like okay, okay. I I can believe that you believe it, and I will try it. Right. And so that, that kind of helped me to move forward for sure. And um, yeah, definitely reaching out for help, I think, is paramount if you've experienced failure in the, fa- in the past, right? Like, oh, this isn't working for me. Okay, then ask for help, right? I think that's a big key component to success. Yeah. And so you, kind of walk us through what it felt like you you've you've encountered you you've tried and unfortunately you failed but it brought you to us but um that that first that first time that first session where you're like okay I'm, I'm gonna do this okay now we're gonna do our first session together um kind of walk us through if you can remember what that what that feeling was like when we were gonna start our first session just moving and ensuring that you are safe and that we are moving you towards affecting your pain, improving your strength and doing all that. So, um, (laughs) okay. So I'm going to share with you some of my inner dialogue that you don't get to hear when we're actually working together. So a little window, right? Well, I don't know what you're going to say because it's (laughs) done. So I'm like, (laughs) So sometimes I'm giving you the look right inside my head, like, really, Ashley, come on, really? Like, but um, like, I can't do that. And you're like, no, you can. I'm like, no, in my head, I'm like, "Mm, I don't know about that, but just, um, but I will try. And I guess that there is a willingness piece. Like you gotta bring that to the table. You gotta bring a willingness piece to the table for sure. And so like, okay, I'll try that. And, and then lo and behold, you every time like, oh my gosh, I could do that. Like, so then I'm like, damn it. So now there's no reason not to, right? So like, um, and the way that you set it up for me was like, oh, this is, this is manageable. I can do that. Like, those are things that all, all of those things are things I can so when you sent me home with my homework, so to speak, it wasn't like, oh, I needed tutoring while I went home. No, I went home and I could do those things. And um, it was completely manageable, even with a busy schedule, right? So um, I think that that there, but there was that inner dialogue, like, really? Mm, I don't know about that. And um, indeed, like, oh my gosh yeah I can do that and then you push a little further and tell like well I was walking up the stairs without pain and and I think um well we'll come back to that yeah so that that answers that question all right I mean I love that internal dialogue I think that is really huge because I also had the same thing when I'm working with uh when I'm on when I'm on your end uh from my client perspective um, whenever presented with something, I'm like, uh, is that really true? I think it is very important for us to be very critical of the the people, the the services we receive, the people that we work with, because there's so there's so much out there. And I think because there's so much information, so much help, so many services that are out there. I think what's really helpful is the fact that we have a lot of variety. That the the concept of access, we have the opportunity to work with many professionals, but being able to work with someone who you connect with but then also sees the true opportunities for you to succeed um, really paramounts any, any sort of knowledge that you can find in the book or even someone who just says, I'm the smartest person in the world. And ultimately it's being able to, <laughs> you know, work with you ultimately. And uh, a, a few minutes ago, you brought up the aspect of, of, of empowerment and being able to show you that, that you can do certain things. And 
that is really one big part of the, the vision of the vision, the mission of our business is to empower our clients um, to be able to do everything that they want. And the amazing thing about working with people virtually now is that we are no longer limited by our location, which is really cool. So for us to be able to get finally reconnected again after all this time to be able to work through it, I mean, I am super thankful. I'm so excited and proud to be able to say, yeah, we work together and look at all the stuff that you can do now, uh, which is really great. Now, um, again, listeners, uh, Marla has does a whole bunch of stuff. I mean, we share a love of gardening and plants and just being around and enjoying the great outdoors. And it's really exciting to be able to hear Marla share her stories about the, the successes and all that. And Marla, like one big piece to all of this, um, and your, your journey is very similar to many people's journeys where they failed and failed and like they've tried many different routes and there's a, there's a lot of information that's out there and was tough. And ultimately your wife was there to help you. She said, here is this person, here's Ashley. Um, and then it's like, okay, all you need to do is just talk to him. So and what's interesting is like, you, we can say all you need to do is talk to Ashley, but there's a lot of things that we have to overcome as human beings to be able to say, okay, I need help or I want to be able to reach and talk to this, talk to Ashley or talk to another specialist. Um, if there was someone who is in the same situation as you, where they've tried many different things, they're also battling a lot of issues related to pain and, and it's preventing them from doing a lot of things that they enjoy, but they're really scared because of the fact of their previous experiences, because it might not have worked very well. What's your biggest piece of advice for, for that person? So then they can be in an awesome position, just like you. That's a really, um, that's a big question. It's a really big question. It's a, a little emotional, really, when you, when I think and feel that question, it's emotional because there's ups and downs, right? And it's not like it's all perfect. Um, and, and I think for me, there, uh, there's one piece that's been helpful of letting go of kind of this destination thing idea, like I'm finished with something. Like I, I think that, and maybe, that's the difference between our first time that we met and this time of like, okay, I'm finished now. I can go up the stairs without pain. Like this isn't a destination kind of a process. This is, um, there's not a finish line. And I, I think that both can feel overwhelming, but also okay in that um, it's part of my life now, right? It's part of my life that makes me feel better. Um, but jumping over that obstacle, like what, what is my advice? <laughs> you know, I'm going to say that um, if you want something to be different, <laughs> you have to do something different. It's, it's such a, we all know this in our mind, but if there's no other way, there's no magic way. Like if you, if you want it to be different, you have to take a different step. And no matter how big that journey is going to be, I was just talking with a student today about this. It's like, yeah, you've got a lot still to go and I'm not there by any stretch of the imagination, but like the only way to, to be in the flow is taking one step towards it, right? So I think of it, um, I heard David White, the poet David White, describe it like um, a duck moving towards water, right? So a duck on land is very lumbering. It, its movements is very lumbering. It almost looks like it's going to tip over when it's walking from one side to the next. It doesn't look at all good or graceful. You're like, what is that weird animal? But the moment that it hits the water, it glides flawlessly, right? Uh, but the only thing standing between 
that duck on land and the water is just a step towards it, no matter how awkward and lumbering it may be, it's still a step towards that graceful movement and the flow. Um, and that's all that is required. It's just that one, one step, right? And really for me, that was getting support and help. Like I couldn't, I couldn't do it by myself. I couldn't do what I'm doing right now by myself. I couldn't. I really couldn't. I'm really grateful for that. I'm grateful for you that way. I get all chill about it. Cause um it's it's changed my life, right? It's um it's movement. It's enjoying the things that I like to enjoy without pain. And what caught, what wouldn't you give for that? What, what wouldn't you do for that? Because I got, I got, I might be old, but I got a lot of life to go, man. And I've got things I want to do and I and create and, and enjoy. And um, it's just that one step at a time. And that was my focus. Just the step right in front of you only. I just have to call Ashley. And even that created movement. And then I just had to have our appointment. And then I just had that one thing that I did time after time, that step towards that movement, that graceful movement. And um, because then once you, you pass that, there's a threshold there that then it, 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 is, it does feel like grace. It does feel like that graceful movement. Like, uh, I, yeah, okay, That's, that, was, that would be my advice. I love that. I would jump right now, but my neighbors would be very unhappy if I were to jump in celebration about your amazing win. In fact, I think the most important thing, and I cannot agree with you more, it's that first big step. And it can be really scary. It can be really tough. But then you take one step and you take another step. And before you know it, as you said, you hit that threshold. When you said that, my nerd brain popped in because in the physiology world, um, we have this aspect called action potentials. And that action potential means that we need to get a certain level of steps before we hit that threshold where something really amazing happens. And that's something that happens uh, mentally, but also physiology on our cells too. Like we need to have a certain number of steps, but the first most important piece is taking that step, which in essence, now you're going up and down stairs without pain. And that is yeah. so amazing. So Marla, thank you so much for, for sharing this in your journey with us, because as, as I said, listeners, Marla is someone who I've been working with for um, quite some time, but we made amazing progress and it's so exciting to share her wins with you all. And for those who are listening, who feel as if you need to make a change, but it's scare. It's scary. Take a take a page out of Marla's book and just take that first step. You don't have to go through this alone either, but you just have to initially reach out for help and say, "I need this." It's not just it goes from need to want, and then before you know it, the world is yours and you can live your life without pain and doing everything that you want. So, Marla, thank you so much for being on this because it was so great to one, see you and catch up with you in this capacity. But again, thank you so much for, for sharing your story. You're so welcome, Ashley. Thank you. I appreciate being with you today. All right. You have a great day. Thank you. You too. Take care. I'll see you soon. Thank you so much for tuning in. We hope you got some help from today's podcast. And for more info, check us out at ifixyoursciatica.com. Have a fantastic and pain-free day. No patient-therapist relationship is formed by listening to this podcast. We are not providing medical advice and all information should be confirmed by a medical provider.